welcome to Life on Turkey Lane. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Um, this video is going to be kind of a compilation. Uh, we're going to look and see uh, if I have any spaghetti squash that need to be harvested or any other things that need to be harvested. Um, I'm going to show you our potato harvest. We um, did that uh, a little bit ago. We're going to show you that potato harvest and uh, Let's get to going. Let's see if we have any spaghetti squash that need to be harvested. And before that, let me show you these sunflowers back here. Now these were supposed to be miniature sunflowers, or um, but they and they're only really supposed to get about two foot tall. But this one is at least it's about four foot tall, and it's got a big bud on the top. They uh, pretty much all of them have buds on top, so I'm waiting for those to open up. But they are doing fabulous. I'm excited about that because I'm gonna take these out of the garden and you know put them in a like a floral arrangement inside the house when they bloom I think they're gonna be so pretty um, but let's go back here and look at the spaghetti squash okay so the spaghetti squash down here you can't hardly see them because this vine is so big so anyway the spaghetti squash is doing really really good and I'm gonna see if I can point you down here and uh, see if you can see some of the ones in there Okay, so I don't know how much you can see down in here. It just looks like a bunch of leaves, but we do have some spaghetti squash on there that I believe we're gonna have to harvest. Um, some of them are not ripe yet, but I think we have a couple that are ripe. So we're gonna try to get in there and we're gonna have to go around on the other side of this uh, trellis here to get to those, but we have some spaghetti squash in there and I'm afraid that we're gonna get ate up by bugs if we don't har start harvesting some so let me get in there and see if there's any that we need to do that with Okay, guys, I don't know That's if you can see me in here. I can't see in the camera. I'm kind of off to the side. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. This was the first one on the vine. It's and not, I'm just going to go ahead and harvest it. It's not going to get not any bigger. grown any bigger. Okay, we've got a couple in here that I'm going to go ahead and harvest. Look, at a, a big one there. Yeah, and that's definitely ready. And there's another one underneath that I think is ready, and there's one on the ground between you that's ready. That one's kind of a small one. Yeah, it's ready though. It's not growing. You can tell when they turn. Okay, Now that one up above, I don't think that's ready yet. That one that's hanging over the fence thing no. here. Okay. I'm gonna come around this way with the camera. Okay guys, so we got about five small, pretty ripe uh, spaghetti squash on here. Um, here is our largest one. So it's a pretty good size. The rest of them are a little bit smaller than that. Um, this was the first one that started to yellow up. And so it's small, but it's gonna be good. And um, so we've got five a little spaghetti squash in there. So I'm happy with that. And we've got quite a few more on the vine and some new ones going. I've noticed that we've got a lot more flowers again. So as long as those get pollinated, we will have quite a few more spaghetti squash. So I'm really excited about that. And um, we harvested a few zucchini yesterday. Some of them, a couple of them were a little bit bigger than we expected. We kind of didn't see them on there and uh, 
so they were kind of large, but anyway, we're happy about this harvest. And I'm gonna enjoy cooking some of these up when they're ready, and uh, yeah. So, um, I'll be back in just a minute, and we're gonna show you the potato harvest. And I'll show you some clips from our vacation. I didn't take a whole lot of videos on our vacation, but I did take some pictures. So I will post those up here and let you know where we went. Um, so anyway, this is the August garden. It's getting overgrown. It's a little bit weedy. And, um, but things are still doing good and we're still harvesting pretty much daily or every other day. And um, so it's going good guys. Okay guys, so leave it to me. Um, uh, while I was getting ready to put this video together and edit everything, um, I noticed that I lost all of my potato harvesting footage. <laughs> I don't know where it went. Um, I think I accidentally deleted it um, when I was making the tomato processing video. I don't know what happened, but anyway, and as you can see, I am in my nasty, messy, horribly messy garage right now. And um, this is where the potato harvest is being stored. So I'm going to turn the camera around and at least just show you how many potatoes we got out of those three bucket. Well, actually there was about, there was, we planted the three buckets in April and we harvested those. And then Andy planted a few more like fingerling potatoes and some other buckets that were sitting out in front of the garden, uh, the fenced garden area. And um, those were done probably sometime in May. So they were ready to be harvested as well. So anyway, I'm gonna turn you around here and show you the harvest. And then I'm gonna talk to you about what happened. Okay guys, so this is all of the potatoes we got out of all of those buckets. I mean, I think we probably got barely more than what we planted as seed potatoes, <laughs> to be honest. So this was a wah, wah moment. <laughs> the potatoes looked like they were doing very good. They grew well, they flowered, they did all the things that potatoes are supposed to do, um, but we did not do what potatoes needed us to do. So um, yeah, so this is our harvest, probably not even 10 pounds of potatoes to be honest. So anyway guys, that was our potato harvest. And so let me just explain to you what we feel we did wrong um, as to why we only got probably maybe seven to 10 pounds of potatoes and most of them were little bitty potatoes <laughs> out of that. Um, this is our first time growing potatoes, so I don't want to feel too bad about it. We, of course, wish that we would have got a bushel basket full of potatoes um, that we could have enjoyed throughout the fall and winter, um, but that didn't happen, and that's okay. Um, we're going to learn from our mistake, and our mistake was we didn't put enough drainage holes in the bottom of the buckets. They weren't big enough drainage holes or enough drainage holes, and so... Um, we feel like that the potatoes stayed too moist. Um, I wish that I, I would have had the footage showing you when we harvested these potatoes. The, the soil was a little bit too moist. Um, there was a lot of ants in the soil because of the moisture. And I'm sorry the camera's shaking. Um, I don't have my camera on the tripod can, right can now. Say something yeah, my husband's gonna say something to hey you guys, also. Well, also, the one that did do well, had big giant cracks in the bottom so it had good drainage the one that we got probably 90 percent of the potatoes off maybe close to 10 pounds because one did good and the others did horrible had a big giant crack in the bottom where it drained really well the others my fault i didn't drill big enough holes in it and i guess the holes got clogged up with dirt so i'm going to go with and, and i've watched other people do bigger holes and i just i didn't have a big drill at the time and i did smaller drill holes throughout it i did a lot but they got clogged up so I'm gonna take actually a, um, what they call a uh, hole saw, I guess, or whatever, and make bigger, bigger holes in the sanctuary. And I think that'll stop a lot of it because they do need good drainage. So she's right, that's basically why, why one did good and the others didn't. So anyway, guys, um, 
I apologize for losing the footage of us harvesting the potatoes because I told you that was something we were going to do together and that's what I intended to do. I lost that footage. I, I think I accidentally deleted it when I deleted some of the other things um, on our tomato processing video. Um, anyway, forgive me for that. I hope, I pray. And, um, but that was our potato harvest. Uh, I believe we know the mistake we made, and so hopefully if we decide to plant potatoes next year, we'll get a better harvest. Um, so there you are. I didn't want to leave you out and let you think that I forgot about it or that we just weren't going to do it or whatever. Now we're going to be harvesting the dill weed. Um, I planted some dill in the garden, as you saw earlier in the spring, way back before planting season. I planted dill um, in the little... Um, uh, what are they called? The little Dollar Tree stackable planters. I did replant some of that into the garden, into the pepper bed, and it grew enormous. And um, sadly enough, I didn't get down there and really harvest any of it, but it did go to flower and seed. And so today we are going to harvest that big plant and um, get all the seed from it and anything that's left of the dill weed we will harvest that as well and i'm going to put that in the dehydrator so let me show you all about that okay guys i have pulled the dill out of the garden bed it is on its last leg it had flowered and now has gone to seed and so i'm collecting that seed and basically let me show you what to do i've i've already got most of this um harvested um but you know dill seed not only can be replanted but it could also be eaten. You can put it in any of your salads. You can put it in like say if you're pickling cucumbers or fermenting cucumbers or any kind of vegetable, you can put some of these dill seeds in there. You can crush them and put them in there and it'll give a, a great dill flavor. Um, so let me show you what I've got here. Now these are the seeds that I've harvested so far. And I'm just gonna pull a little bit of the chaff out of there. Um, but as you can see, I've got a nice little harvest of seeds. And all you do is you take the dead flower head. Uh, you know, these were the flowers off the dill. And normally they're yellow, but when they die and they dry out, then you're left with the seeds. And all you do is just take the seed head, squish it between your fingers like this, and just rub them between your fingers until all the little seeds fall off. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do it now. Some people will let these hang in, in their house or something like that and just harvest when they need it or whatever. But I'm gonna go ahead and harvest these and let them continue to make sure they're completely dry. And then we'll put them in a little container and I can use them in my cooking later on. Like I said, if I uh, get a chance to can up some vegetables or ferment some vegetables, these will be a great flavor addition to that. And so, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of the harvest and collect everything we can. And um, so here you go. If you've ever wondered where dill seeds come from or how you get them, this is it. You just let your plants die back. And you can see my plant here that is completely dead and woody. Now I do have some green dill left on the plant and I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and I'm gonna dehydrate that. Or you can, you know, this is fresh dill. You can use it in, like if you wanna make a potato salad right now or egg salad or um, anything like that, it's completely usable. Um, now these seeds on the flowers that's not completely, completely dried, you can still use them. Now they would not be good for planting. Um, they would not grow more dill, but you can still eat them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add them into my bunch here get all the goodness we can. And uh, this is the last of the dill I can harvest for the season. Like I said, it's died back and um, it's not gonna continue to grow. So we're just gonna get all that, that we can and call it a day, a day. So there you go. I pretty much got all the seeds off of these things. So anyway, over the next month, this is August now, 
And over the next month, the garden is probably with the heat a different thing. It's going to start dying back and we're going to harvest everything that we can possibly get off of them. And then we'll be tearing this garden out. I think I'm going to go ahead and plant some garlic this fall. Um, I'm toying with the idea of planting some like broccoli and cauliflower, but I don't know if I'll be doing that because I haven't started any seed and I'm not sure how they would do just uh, planting seed in the garden. So that that's a big toss up there. Um, so yeah, we're thrilled with our garden. I just did upload my uh, tomato processing day. We have We've been getting tomato after tomato after tomato out of the garden and I am thrilled about that and we've gotten a whole bunch of it canned up and ready to use, you know, like for pasta or anything we want to use it for. So we're super thrilled about that. Um, anyway, at the end of this video, I will show you, like I mentioned, I will show you pictures from our vacation and let you know where we went. Um, sorry, I'm kind of sweaty. It is very hot and humid outside right now. Um, but we went to a place called that we had never been before here in Missouri. Um, I don't even know where I found out about it, but um, I saw an ad or something about it and it's called uh, Jolly Mill Park. It's a beautiful, beautiful place, a uh, park that is, um, it's kind of privately owned. It's not owned by the state of Missouri, um, surprisingly enough. And um, they had, there's a mill, an old mill on the property and um, a spring on the property and there's a really small covered bridge. It, I don't think the covered bridge is, is historic, um, but the mill is historic um, and it was just a beautiful place to visit. And so we did that. And then um, I think I have a couple pictures from maybe a few other places that we went. We just kinda, we just kinda roamed around Missouri for a few days and um, enjoyed ourselves. And so I will put some of those pictures up and um, so anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. I'm thankful that you're here. Um, I'm super thrilled with our garden and I hope that you enjoy these little preservation um, things that I'm showing you. Um, I hope that you'll take the time, if you have the time, to um, preserve up some of your own foods, um, to grow some of your own foods. Now, let, before I get off of here, let's just talk about something. Let me aim the camera up here. So like I said, before I get off of here, let's just talk about something. Um, I know that you guys probably watch a lot of gardening uh, channels, a lot of homesteading channels, um, and are interested in those types of things. And I know there's a lot of homesteading channels out there that are pushing everybody to grow your own food, buy organically, do, you know, do all of these wonderful things and they are wonderful things but let's just face it i want to talk to you about the truth here not everybody can grow a garden not everybody can homestead you know i mean there are circumstances not everybody can quit their jobs and buy a homestead and start up and live off grid and or do all of those things and while they sound so nice and so wonderful and you're thinking boy i'd really like to do that we all know it's not feasible for everybody in the country to buy a homestead or a farm or build a big garden in their backyard or wherever, um, it's not feasible. You know, I mean, there's not enough land in this whole world for every single individual to have a farm or a homestead or there's not enough money for everybody to be able to quit their jobs either. It's, um, it's fine and wonderful, some of these homesteaders that have been able to quit their day shift full-time job and um, go off grid and buy a farm and do all these things. It's wonderful for them. I'm thankful that they were able to do it, but we all know that not everybody can do that. So um, before I get off of here, I just want to encourage you that you're not, um, let's see, you're not a loser because you can't do that. You're not lazy because you can't do that. And um, chances are, if you still have a full-time job, you're smart. You're, you're, you know, you need to keep your job. And um, uh, I've seen some shows where people have walked away from their jobs, from their nice homes, um, to go out and build a homestead and live off grid. And there's been a lot of them who have failed 
and they've lost everything to uh, seek after this dream that they weren't equipped to do. And so I just want to let you know and encourage you that if you can't have a garden, if you can't homestead and you have to work a full-time job just like I do and like my husband do, that's okay. You can still make it. And I know while right now the world is kind of a scary place, we don't know what's going to happen. No, nobody's ever known what's going to happen in the future. Um, we could fall on hard times or not. It's best to be prepared just in case. And you can still do that without having a homestead and without gardening. You can still be prepared and you can still stock up on groceries while they're still available. And But I do want to let you know that the prices are going up. Um, and I don't mean to make this a really long video and spout off all of these things, but I do want to let you know that even just in our area, we went to the grocery store yesterday and um, the canned goods at the regular grocery store um, that we usually go to, and it, it's a place that's, usually their prices are pretty decent, they're pretty fair, and um, a can of green beans was $1.10, and that was for the generic brand, okay? So that's alarming, guys. I'm not talking about Dole and Del Monte and Libby's and um, what are some other green giant brands of canned goods. I'm talking about the generic brand. Ours is called Best Choice in our area. I don't know what yours is called. Um, but our generic brand vegetables were $1.10 a can, okay? And so, we decided to go across the street and, and stock up on a few canned goods at all these, the things that I couldn't grow in my garden, like green beans or corn and things like that, and, or enough shelling peas. Um, so we went ahead and bought a flat of each one of those. And all these right now, they're still, um, I believe they were 64 cents a can. So, but that's still about half of what they were at the regular grocery store. So if you have the opportunity, it might be a good idea while you can to um, go to either your local grocery store if the prices haven't gone up yet and pick you up some supplies. Um, or if you have an Aldi nearby, definitely stop at them because um, I believe I've heard that the prices are going to be going up even there. And um, so get some things while you can. But like I said, um, you're not a loser if you can't do a homestead or if you can't grow a garden. We know that not everybody has that kind of space or time or energy. You may be older and, and can't get outdoors anymore. It's not feasible for you to have a homestead or grow a garden, but you still can be prepared. So I encourage you to do that. And um, I thank you for listening to me rant and rave. And I hope you have a wonderful blessed day, evening, morning, night, whenever it is that you're watching this. Take care of yourself, do yourself some good, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Well, that, that little creek is just as pretty as can be. That is gorgeous. Yeah, the Tal Wooten Bridge. Like that, the trees, some trees, and sit by the water. So you go around and have that rock there, there's a big crawl in. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely gorgeous.